Hello again everybody, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome again to another one of my video shorts on current topics at electrical-online.com and right here on YouTube. In this video I'm going to discuss the kitchen range outlet, which is a 50 amp two pole circuit fed with number 8 wire and then you have your 50 amp receptacle installed below the range. So we're going to show you how that's connected in the panel first and then we'll show you how that outlet is configured and connected as well. So to understand how your range receptacle is connected in your panel, here we are again with a quad breaker, 40 amp two pole. That's two center breakers here. They're barred together, so if one trips, it'll pull the other one off as well. You see I've got red on the bottom, black on the top lug. These are number eight gauge wires in a three wire cable. Here's the number eight neutral, tied onto the neutral bus bar and then the ground wire is tied on behind to the panel tub on the green terminals for the ground. So 8-3 cable, 40 amp breaker going down to the receptacle for the range. I'm going to show you that receptacle next. Here's an electrical range outlet box. It's actually just a 4 and 11 16 box, outlet box, that's you would install a, a receptacle such as this in. Now these are quite common where I'm from originally in Alberta, Canada. Uh, that's about all we use for ranges and dryers is that size of a box with the same outlet to match. Here in the US I've noticed quite a bit that they use an oversized box with a plaster ring and then a standard size outlet of 50 amp four wire receptacle for the dryer and the range. They're a little harder to work with I find. I think these are a nicer idea but uh, it's not quite as common, at least here in Arizona. So, the principles are the same anyway. I'll show you which terminals you use, what wires you connect them to, and then important to note that you want to mount that receptacle sideways because the cord for the range, the wire comes out on an angle, so this box is nice and low to the floor, and so when you plug in your range and you push that range back in, the cord will fold up nicely behind the drawer space in the bottom of the range. So. Let me get a close up here and we'll show you which wires go where. So taking a closer look at this receptacle on the face, it's a Leviton, it's a NEMA configuration 14-50R and that is a 120, 50 amp, 125, 250 volt receptacle. What you have here is that's the ground hole, the neutral is opposite of it, and your two hots, red and black, will go on either side, doesn't matter which is which. Flipping it over, you can see one side is the ground, that hole is facing the opposite direction of the other three. So you put your ground wire there, flip it over, your neutral goes here, and your hot wire is on either side. Terminals are usually marked X and Y, and that's usually marked neutral or white. Let's hook it up. So here's my connections all made to the terminals. I've got my ground wire on one side, neutral in the middle here on the opposite side, and then my hot on either side on either hot terminal. Flipping it over, you can see again, ground, neutral, hot, hot. Let's mount this in the box. Here's a little tip that is good for any time you're terminating a stranded wire to a lug such as this. You want to strip it to the proper length as per the strip gauge on here. Then insert them in and you want to tighten those terminals down nice and snug. But with stranded wires what happens is you've got a bunch of strands all together. So think of it like this. You tighten down, put pressure with the screw and they'll slip over each other and it becomes loose again. So what you want to do is after you've tightened it and you think it's good and snug, wiggle it, wiggle all of them and then give them another snugging. You'll find lots of times that you'll be able to get another quarter turn on them. Just a good, good piece of advice when terminating a stranded conductor to a lug. So there's a receptacle installed. I'm just using my demonstration wall here, but you would have, of course, drywall surrounding this outlet box, and then the receptacle would be fit nicely over top, fitting flush to the drywall. Let's just check it now, make sure we've got the proper readings. I've got the breaker back on. And let's see, there we go, 240, 241 from red to black. And let's try to leave red to neutral, 120. 
Let me get a better picture of that. Try to get my hand out of the way. Black to neutral. There we got 120 volts there as well. And you should have that same reading from black to ground and from red to ground you'll have 120 volts. So 120 from red and black to hot and neutral and between the black and red, 240 volts. This would be ready to plug in your range. Now, interesting to note, this is also an RV receptacle, a 50 amp, 250 volt RV receptacle. So you can use the information on this video to connect up an RV circuit for, again, 50 amp, 120 volt. This is using eight gauge wire, eight three Romex, fed by a 40 amp, two pole breaker. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel here at YouTube. Also check out my website at electrical-online.com. There's much more information there as well as our store where you can purchase the basics of household wiring. This is available in a DVD or as an instant download and it's simply the best electrical educational program there is on the market. We also have my course available now at udemy.com. That's u-d-e-m-y.com. It's called Learn the Basics of Household Wiring. It's a fully comprehensive course that'll help you understand your home's electrical system and make you a more safe and competent weekend wiring warrior. Thanks again. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician.